how's it going today? I hope you're having a great day. And today I want to go over some FCF commands. And so this is kind of an intro video getting you started on FCF and using it and some of the things that are outlined in the docs and kind of going over that and how you can build up to use FCF in a number of different ways and in conjunction with other tools. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a curl command and JQ. So watch to the end of the video and I'll show you some really cool stuff that you can do. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome and consider subscribing and liking and let's jump into how you can use FCF and I'll show you some cool stuff. Okay, so the first thing is we'll go to the documentation which is here on GitHub and you just go to June Gun FCF. I'll have a link of this in the description so you can click it and go and download it. I believe that I use Homebrew to install this so you can just do a brew install FCF if you're using a Mac. If you're using some other operating system, then it has different ways that you can get the binary or clone it from Git or any of the other package managers on Linux or Windows. So check these out on the GitHub page. Once you have it installed, you should be able to use FCF and hit enter and you should see something like this. So what this is doing is it's actually searching through all of your files in your system and giving you a fuzzy matcher so you can go you know, document or Docker file. And to go up and down, you can do the down arrow, the up arrow, you can do control N or control P and then also control J or control K. For me, that doesn't work because I have it mapped with Tmux and we're in Tmux right now, but you can do that if you don't have those conflicting with any of your other keyboard shortcuts. If you want to select multiple files and it's enabled, then you can hit tab. And if you want to unselect them, you can hit shift tab and it'll unselect. Now, once you've selected something, you can hit enter. So I'll unselect this, unselect this. And if I hit enter, then we can see that that outputs here on the terminal. So FCF is going to read from standard in and it's going to output to standard out. And so you can see that displayed here where we're just reading whatever directory we're in and then we're outputting whatever file we select to standard out. There's some other keyboard shortcuts that are already installed. So if you do control R, then this is going to search through your command history and let you fuzzy search through it. So let's say, you know, I wanted to go open my ZSHRC. Well, I can do that. Then I can find all the different occurrences of different things. And again, go up and down using the up and down arrow or the control and like in and P commands. To exit out of this, just hit escape and you can go back to your terminal. And if you wanted to search files instead of your command history, you can hit control T and you can see this populate. It has a nice little count here of all the different files, which right now is including the node modules, which is always gigantic. If I wanted to fuzzy search over all these files, then again, I can with Docker. If I wanted to open up my Docker file or Docker compose file, then I can do that and do whatever I need to. There's also a couple of built-in ways that you can autocomplete. So if I do invim and then star star, well, this is going to autocomplete once I hit tab. And if I hit tab here, you can see all the different files. So this is a nice way to quickly open a few different files. So let's say I wanted to open my Docker file and maybe this other next config file. I hit enter and both of those are ready to go and I can hit enter again and I'm already in NeoVim ready to go. So I can do all my different commands to open up different files and quickly navigate to all the different buffers that are open. If I wanted to CD into another directory, I can do the same thing where I have star star and then autocomplete. From here, I can then fuzzy search into the source directory, hit enter and go back into that directory, quickly getting into it. And if you notice from those autocompletes, for NVIM, it automatically searched for files and for CD, it was already looking at directories. And this type of thing is configured in the auto completion for FCF. And this is all configured wherever your installation of FCF is. For me, that's in this FCF.zsh. And if we take a look at this file, then we can see where my auto completion stuff is installed and where it's sourced from. So if we take a look at where this is and we actually open up this file here, then we can see uh, auto completion and this is how everything is configured. So if you look for star star, this is how that auto completion works. And you can go to all the different ways that auto completion is configured and even add your own auto completion. I won't get into that for this video, but FCF is a really highly configurable tool. You can customize it to however you need it to behave. All right, we're back over here inside of our source directory and let's go back to the root level. We'll clear this terminal and I can show you a couple of really cool commands. So because FCF takes in standard in, we can pipe that 
into FCF and have it do different functions for us. An example of that is doing find, looking for type, and we're gonna look for the files only. We're gonna pipe that into FCF, and then we're gonna use this argument of preview, and that'll show us a preview of the file that we're about to open. And you can use different commands in this. For us, we'll do less, and then you have to have these little curlies, and that will provide the file into this less command. If we hit this, then we can see we have a little preview window on the right hand side and we can see going through each of the files in this directory what they look like and then whenever we hit enter then we have an output of this and we can do something we can pipe this to another command or do something magical with it there's other ways to configure and different arguments that you can use for fcf i won't get into all of them but if you do man fcf then you should see all the different options you can pass to it i won't get into all of this in this video but something to check out so you can dig further and see exactly how you can configure FCF. Now for the really cool stuff, I wanna take a curl command and I want to go and get some weather data and then run it through JQ and parse it. And then from there, I wanna pass it into FCF and filter so that I can figure out exactly what information I want and I also wanna have a preview window. I'm gonna autocomplete this command here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. There's a gist for it. The first command here is we're doing a curl and the dash S means that we're gonna suppress the network traffic information. I don't really care about that. And so I'm just gonna suppress it. So we're gonna hit this API and we're gonna get back some JSON. From there, we're gonna run it through JQ, which if you don't have JQ installed, highly recommend a very powerful tool. The dash C is going to be a compact view. And then we're going to parse out from the dot properties. And then there's a nested key underneath that that is periods, which is the different forecasts for the different hours of the day. From there, we're going to do another pipe. And then I'm going to pass that into FCF. We're going to reverse the results. And then we're going to say a header of make a selection. No height is going to make it full screen. And then our preview window. I had to fiddle with this a lot. Hopefully this saves you a little bit of time if you're dealing with JSON stuff. From here, we use the same kind of syntax and we pipe that into JQ and then the dash E, that means we need to do an exact match. So this is gonna remove some of the fuzzy matching in FCF, but it will get more exact results when we filter down. So if I run this, then we see it make a request out to the server and all of these individual records that are parsed out, we can go up and down and view them and they're pretty similar, but we can see that the temperature is increasing as we go later on in the day, and we can see how things are behaving. If we wanted to do a search, so let's say that we wanted to look for like a certain start time, so we wanted to do like 11, and anything after 11, then we can filter down to this and see only those results, so we can figure out exactly how to make our selection. From here, we would hit enter, and we can see the output of that JSON, that we selected, which again, we could pipe this into a bunch of different commands. We could open this up into a browser. We could do other really cool and awesome things, but this foundation lets you do a lot of really interesting things. That's everything I wanted to cover for FCF in this intro video. I plan on making another one, but let me know in the comments of what things you are interested in for FCF and if this was helpful. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.